Hey guys, Craig here. Welcome back. How you doing? Got one more beer here to do. <clears throat> this will be it for a while. It's another one from 27 Brewing. And this is a um, Huckleberry Ale. And it says, what the huck? Can you see that? Try and hold it close up there so you guys can kind of see it. What the huck? And it says it's got a, a little bit of, a little hint of berries in it. So I'm looking for this. I think it's 5% ABV. And I know, there's Craig with another beer review. When's he gonna brew beer? I started doing this when I was 40, making these videos. And now I'm 55 and a half. So, <laughs> things can change in 15 years a little bit. I'm getting tired of standing and lifting things and you know, all that stuff. My body's getting old. So, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of videos up on YouTube of mine that some of you probably haven't ever seen. And if you haven't, then, you know, you're always welcome to go back. I've covered just about everything. I shouldn't say that, actually. I've covered a lot of different topics regarding beer brewing. I haven't done everything. I never did a yeast starter. Uh, I never did um, a lots of different types of mash and things like that. By the time I started getting into that kind of thing, I was sort of starting to feel like I was getting tired of dealing with all the lifting and all the heavy stuff and the, getting the grains, bringing them home. And let's get into this one here. And um, give it a pour. Thanks, 27 Brewing. Let's see what we've got here. All right. This is my first beer of the afternoon. Beautiful sunny day outside. And uh, I should be outside doing this. But then I have to take everything outside and I just want a beer. <laughs> so I thought, I'll just do it sitting here in my living room. This looks like a beautiful beer because it's not clear. As you can, I think you can see that. Um, it's quite hazy, which to me means flavor. So it's, it's Mr. Microphone there. Um, so. <sighs> nice, pilsnery, little fruity. Let's give it a swirl. I mean, a whirl. You always got to be careful if you touch your nose there, you should turn it before you put your mouth on it. Little tip there. Cheers. Mm. Very much like a lager. Uh, it's got that that flavor. And the hint of berries um, that it says on the on the can or the bottle there, or a touch of berries. Yes, it does have that. And they add a nice sweetness to it. Should I get that? <laughs> Hello? Help? Well, I don't own my home. Uh, I do rent. Hello? Yes. You want to, I'm sorry, you want to clean my furnace? I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that last part. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that last part. You know what? If I didn't if I didn't value my phone, my nice new cordless phone, I would slam this down on my table here so hard this thing would not survive. Yes, you know what I hate about them? They hang up on you. If you don't have what they need, like they, they, you know, is this the homeowner? I'm sorry, but I don't um I don't own my home. 
I rent. I rent a townhouse. What do they do? Oh, I'm sorry to bother you, sir. I, thank you very much and have a nice day. No, they don't do that. They hang the f*** up is what they do. They just hang up. And that pisses me off. Like, I'm super nice to these people. Usually, I'm sorry, I don't, I, I don't have any carpets. I, you know, I do have a carpet, but it's not, you know. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, my ducks have just been cleaned. I'm, I'm good. I don't have siding. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm all fine with my furnace. Uh, my hot water heater works great. Uh, I'm, all, I'm all good. Thank you for calling. Click. And that pisses me off more than the call itself. If they just said, okay, sir, thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Nope. They hang up. And I have a good mind to call that number back and say, uh, excuse me, why did you hang up on me? You know what? Let's see. Let's see what happens. Probably, you probably can't call them back. Anyway, this is a waste of time. But that, that really burns my... Hello. Yes, hello. Hello. Is this... Um, huh? I just... I'm sorry. You see, your, your number is being used uh, to call people for furnace cleanings. Uh, no. Who are you? Who? I'm, my name is Craig, and I just got a call from this number. Excuse You're... me, I don't speak English. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. So you see what they're doing, and that's not the first time I've had that happen. You call the number back that comes up on your phone, and it's not even the place that called you. It's some poor woman or guy who's sleeping or whatever, and he's like, hello? I'm like, hi, is this uh, uh, Utopia Furnace Cleaning? Uh, no, my name's Chris, and I'm sleeping. That's what they do. This should be there. See, I didn't have anything to talk about, but now I do. This should be illegal. This is an invasion of privacy on my part and on the part of the person who's receiving uh, the whose phone whose phone number is being used to, and their name is on there too. That person's name is on my phone. This happened to me once before, actually a few a few times, three times in the last month or two, where I've called the number back and it was some just regular person. Okay, anyway. I just figured it might have been important because it looked like a, a normal phone number, like a local phone number, and, and it looked like a you know relatively normal name. So I thought, well, maybe I better answer it. Maybe it's one of my neighbors. Maybe, you know, my sister or my mother's calling me from some other phone and they need something. And that's why I answered it. But, you know, my rule of thumb is to do not answer this I, this is a this is a um, a landline by the way. I guess I do have a landline because uh I um like to have the 911 uh where I can just dial 911 and if I can't speak they'll know exactly where I live and they'll come and help me. Uh also um I don't pay a lot for my cell phone. I pay a minimum and I don't get unlimited minutes every day. So I can't sit and gab, gab on my cell phone all day long. So I have a landline too. If I wasn't on camera, the swear words would have, I would have been, oh. I would have been making up new words. New swear words. Or combinations of ex existing ones. Maybe, you know. Yeah. Anyway, that's what they're doing. And, and it should be um, illegal. Um, you know, you, you go on, um, you know. Facebook or YouTube and you talk about something political that, you know, the uh, the owners of the, the uh, service don't necessarily agree with and your, your, your video gets taken down and your channel gets deleted or something like that or suspended um, or whatever. But yet people are allowed to call your house using somebody else's phone number and ask you if you need your furnace cleaned. And when you say, I, I rent my furnace, I don't, you know, I rent my apartment, they'll, they'll just hang up on you. And, and what I used to start doing is, is um, I'd say, hello, yeah, well, this is uh, such and such duck cleaning. Uh, is this the homeowner? And I used to just, 
I honestly, I'm, I, I'm so, I was so tired of being nice to these people when they, all they do is hang up on you. If they, if you're not a homeowner, like you're a piece of shit. I used to just yell into the phone, tell them to bleep off. But then I started getting worried, like, well, I don't know. I don't want to piss anybody off. I don't need someone going up the side of my house and start cut wires and things like that. So I'm, I'm a little paranoid about that kind of thing. So I just, I, I used to, don't usually answer it. Okay, that's enough of that. And, and by the way, uh, I, all, my, all my telemarketing calls come to this phone. I generally don't give my cell phone number to anybody except family and, you know, people I'm close to. So <clears throat> that way I don't get calls on my cell phone like that. And this one I can ignore and, you know. All right, that's another reason why I have a landline because that's where all the garbage phone calls come in and uh, stuff like that. So if I need to give somebody a phone number because I have to sign up for something, uh, I'll give them this one because I can just I can just turn the ringer off and just ignore it until I need it. Right, back to the beer. <laughs> I had, Hey, I had topics, but I, I guess they don't need to be... I'll save until next time. Let's see what this is doing. Oh, it's nice. It's only 5%, which is nice. Although I know you say only. In Canada, 5% beer is kind of weak. <laughs> you know? But I, I could be totally wrong about that. And, and please don't, don't, don't hesitate to correct me. And I want to thank 27 Brewing for sending me these beers. In the meantime, I am going to let you guys get back to your normal lives. And I'm going to go and do some other work around the house. I appreciate you joining in and watching. And uh, didn't mean to scare you on the last video. I just was just telling it like it is, you know. This is behind the scenes stuff now. It's not... It's not as well planned out and honed as the old stuff was because I spend a lot of my time on other things now that I enjoy doing based on the fact that I thought my YouTube days were over thanks to YouTube deleting my accounts. I took up some other hobbies and I'm enjoying those hobbies. One of them is a radio show that I do on Sunday afternoons, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern on Sunday afternoons retro 80s radio.com just go to that website there's a radio station playing there and at 5 p.m on sunday afternoons i'll be on for two hours playing 80s music that you may remember if you grew up in that era um, you can also find it on my tuner on um uh, and on um roku on tune in radio um apple tv Geez, I don't know. There's a lot of other ways to find it. All you got to do is remember Retro 80s Radio. You type that into Google, you'll find it. There's music playing on there, there all the time. It's a 24-hour, 7, 24-7 uh, station. And on Sunday afternoons, that's my turn to play Mr. DJ <laughs> and uh, try to entertain you, entertain you guys and gals with some great 80s music for a couple of hours. And I really, really enjoy that. It takes... A long time it takes hours for me to prepare for that show i have to get music together i have to collect information i've got to set up equipment i've got to get levels straight do test recordings it takes hours but the show itself it's like a casey Kasem style show and believe me i i'm not casey Kasem, but he did inspire me uh when i was younger and um and it's that's what it is it's at the bottom of your screen. There it is. All righty. Anyway, thanks, everybody. And thanks, you folks who send these beers in. I really appreciate that. And uh, I, I enjoy them, too. Take care of yourselves. Be safe out there. Well, hopefully things are getting better in your neck of the woods. They're still a little rough around here, but we're getting there. They're pushing the vaccines like you've never seen it before they are absolutely just dying to get these things into people's arms and i guess the the normal way of thinking about it is well yeah because you know we want to get things back to normal and you know we want to get this this darn virus you know it dealt with so the more people get vaccinated the more the virus will go away and stop spreading Makes sense, right? 
The only problem is, and I'll just put this on at the end quickly. The only problem is, is that who's po who is pushing the, the vaccine the most is the media, you know, the television media. And unfortunately, and I, I hate to say this, but it's absolutely the honest to God truth. Unfortunately, many, many people do not trust the mainstream media, myself included. You know, I've, I've, I've gone beyond trusting them. I used to. And I learned my lesson. So, and lots of other people have too. In fact, almost half of the population, the, at least the, uh, you know, American, you know, Canadian population, uh, don't trust the mainstream media. Don't watch it. Don't trust it, you know. And uh, they get their information elsewhere, as I do. And those places where I get that information from, most of them, if some of them do promote the vaccine. So, you know. But, you know, you got these mainstream radio and television stations who are paid to say everything they say and told to say everything, whatever they say, they're told to say it. Um, and you can't trust them because they've been caught lying so many times. Well, or exaggerating or you know, flipping or, you know, whatever. And they're telling you to get the vaccine. It's a little hard for people, some people to to just go out and get it. And that's the problem. It's not. They're, it's not the people's fault that they're scared of the vaccine. It's the mainstream media's fault for being so, such idiots and not allowing us to trust them because they lie all the time. All of them. It's not our fault. It's their fault for, for not building a source of information that we can all trust and believe in. If we had that, then there'd be no problem. We'd all do what they say because we would be able to trust them. Okay, I'm going to go. That's that. You, you've heard me say this before. I'm not letting up on this. It's the way it is. It's the way it is. The Washington Post, the New York Times, all of those tabloids, they're all... Mm, I'm not going to say it. All right. <laughs> Smile. Enjoy your beer. See you soon, guys. Thanks a lot. Take care. Mm-hmm.